Surrogate management is part of the Sharegate subscription. Every Sharegate customer has access to connect one tenant to Sharegate management. The very first connection will need to be established using a global admin account so that you give us the permissions we need. And once this is done, anyone else in your tenant that's also a global admin, a SharePoint admin, or a groups admin will be able to work with you in Sharegate management to do that governance for your Microsoft 365 environment. As you first get started, you're going to see this first crawl happening and data being populated. But within minutes, we should have the total number of teams of SharePoint team sites and communication sites in your environment so that you have one location with the visibility over all these modern resources within your tenant. Teams, well, you know, is a Microsoft team. Team sites around here are all the SharePoint team sites connected to a Microsoft 365 group. So they could be modern team sites that were created in SharePoint that automatically created that 365 group. And they can also be the ones that come from team. So this is not 87 plus 59. It's really that out of the 87 SharePoint team sites connected to groups, you have 59 that are using the team's application. And then you have your communication sites that are listed here. You're able to open them up to see the membership and manage their permissions. You could go to SharePoint and open them up. Now, if we go back to team sites or teams, well, those tiles are really a filtered view that represent the different policies and automation that ShareGate management can provide to you and your organization. So you are able to see all your teams or team sites that are currently orphaned. Second things now that people will look into are the inactive groups or the inactive team sites. Basically those team sites or if I filtered on teams is actually going to switch on teams, the ones that have been considered inactive. So we look into teams for messages or replies to those messages. We look into SharePoint site for views, access, modifications for messages being sent and in the shared calendar. The default threshold is 90 days. If we don't have any visibility for 90 days or actions for 90 days, this is when we flag those teams as inactive. And then that's where you have some actions that are available. You could take action yourself as an admin, select a team and decide to keep archive or delete it. If you don't know, you can manually ask the owners and send them a notification either by Teams chat or by email so that they can tell you to keep archive or delete. Now, you can also automate this entire process. When you go to your settings, you could say, well, here's my threshold. And as I toggle this on, any team that's considered inactive will now be sent an email or chat notification asking the owners to take action on their inactive team. I'm going to skip the purpose and sensitivity tags for now. I want to go to the other security policy. This tile shows you all teams where a guest might have been added or a file was shared externally. This way, as an admin, you can open the team, check out the details, see who are those guests, and remove them if you need to. Same applies to your external sharing links. They're all listed here, and you can see everything that's been shared. You could take action and de delete those sharing links so that no you know, person received it no longer can access the file. But if you don't know, because you have a lot of teams and you're in IT, you're not working within all those hundreds, if not thousands of teams, well, then you'll want to ask the owners. Select one or multiple of these teams. Use Ask Owner to send that notification. This can be automated once again. You toggle this on, and then it's set to a recurrence. And let me show you what that actually looks like on the end user standpoint. The end users receives a notification, they click review and they're brought to this dashboard where they're prompted to review guests and external sharing links. They could see that in this case, this owner would have two teams, one guest and a bit more sharing links to review. Now I hit start review. Maybe I want to remove the person if I want. I could also change my mind and then move on to review external sharing links. Per team, I could see all the sharing links, who shared it, to who, when. And as you can tell here, this is a shared effort. There's multiple owners on that team, and it looks like Leonie would have actually taken care of this before I did. Very first time, it might be a little... Uh, daunting for the users because if you never monitored external sharing, there could be more than they think. But as you as they complete their reviews and then do it the next time, well, it's going to make it easier and easier to keep on top of everything and help you enforce governance by making sure once again that only the right people have access to the right things. Now, let me want to go back quickly to the purpose and sensitivity tags that I skipped earlier. These are specific to ShareGate. They allow you to categorize teams. Purpose is to identify 
the reason behind the team, its purpose. You have a few tags by default. You can customize them as you need or create more. You're going to give the name a description that's really important, especially the description, since this is what users will see in order to make their decision. Where it becomes really interesting for the purpose tags is that beyond the categorization, you can also set a custom inactivity threshold and say, well, these types of teams, I'm going to consider inactive after 60 days. And then these are the ones, 30 days is plenty long. That's all I need to actually consider the team inactive and then reach out at that period instead of the default 90 days. You can manually ask owners the same way I uh, shared before. And if you automate the policy, whenever we detect a new team that doesn't have this information already, well, then we'll ask the owners to apply it. And you could do the same with sensitivity tags. They work the exact same way, but what they do is a little bit different. They help you understand the level of sensitivity of content and conversations you know, that happen within the teams. And consequently, let you automatically assign the right security settings to the team. Should it be private or public? How do you do external sharing? Do you allow guests or not? Whatever the settings are on the team, when you apply confidential, it will automatically update those settings. It's a way for you to get better understanding of the sensitivity of the teams and then to automatically apply the right security settings to them. It also brings you a bit of customization. You can actually change the recurrence of that external sharing review we just saw to a stricter or per more permissive schedule. Overall, apply different governance rules to your Microsoft 365 environment so that you can avoid sprawl, keep the upper hand on security, ensure the right people have access to the right things, and probably even more.